Hello, it's Richard at Richard's Guitars and uh, I'm here to do part two of our blues, understanding blues videos. Hopefully I'll do a few more as long as you all are interested and hopefully as long as I keep connecting with you and making some sense. Now, it's really very important to tell me if I, I, I for example, I could see from video one the comments really were very lovely, thank you very much, and uh, that was really quite encouraging. But more importantly, it showed me that there was a, a, a general consensus, that there was an understanding of what was being said, and what I was relaying to you wasn't too, uh, too complicated. Now, some of the concepts that I talk about might seem overwhelming, but only if there's a few things that maybe aren't quite slotting into place. And it's really important that anything that I say, if it doesn't make sense, to please comment in the comments below because I will address those comments and I will also use that for the basis of other videos. And you, what hopefully what you'll find is that you may not be understanding this video right now, but by doing another video on the bit that you're missing, the, the, the jigs, part of the jigsaw puzzle that you need to get the full picture, that will then help this all makes sense in this video too. So please watch the video even if it seems to be a bit overwhelming. How often do you get the opportunity to tell the person that's doing you the video that you don't understand and get them to make your video? <laughs> so I'm telling you that's what I'll do. So don't just sit there in silence and feel like you, you know you can't do it. Please let me know and I will try and help. So in the first video we covered the first chord, the one chord. And just to put this into context, we have what's called a 1-4-5 progression. And it's a common sort of uh, shell or uh, framework that the blues is based around. And what we can simply say is, if you have a, a major scale, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, back to one again. If we were to build a chord from the one, two, three, four, and the five, so the one, four, and five from the from the from the scale, we're building chords, three chords, from those positions. They happen to all be what we call seventh chords, dominant seventh chords. So we've got the A7 in this case, we're playing in A. If our blues is in A, we'll do A7, we'll do D7, and we'll do E7. And that's the basis of that's what I needed just to sort of be aware of that from the start of this video. So the first uh, video that we did, we were talking about why notes work against the one chord, okay? And uh, I won't repeat myself because you should go back and watch that. Mm -hmm. So what the, this video is going to be about is now talking about the four chord, okay? So we don't mean the fourth chord in the progression, we mean the four chord. The, the, the chord that is built off that fourth degree. In other words, A is the one we start on. The next one is built off the one, two, three, four, the D, the D7 in this case. If we were doing a key, if we were doing a, a blues in G, we'd start on G, and the next chord would be a C. Because it's the fourth degree. One, two, three, four. It just shifts up and down. If we're doing key, if we're in um, B, one, two, three, four, and then we've got E. Okay, it's always the same. The, the intervals are always the same. They're the, relatively they're the same. All that happens is as you slide it up and down, the notes underneath change. But the spacing, the distance between those notes always remains the same. So it's important not to get uh, confused by that. Okay, so we're looking at the chord, the four chord. So let's, let's dive into that. Now, I have done a graphic and the graphic is currently um, I'm not sure if I've shared it yet, but I, I will share it um, on Facebook and uh, where else did I put it last time? I had it on Facebook, uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll make sure you've got it. But right here, I'll put a link to it. I'll put a link to it in the video below. This may not come out very well on, ah, there you go. So now for the time being, you see, um, obviously by the time, oh yes, <laughs> hang on, let me, let me do what they do in the videos. Uh, hang on, so if I'm, I'm kind of, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm more on this side. So if I'm more on this side, I'll put it, bing, <laughs> put it there, bing. Look, look, touch it, look. Oh, 
That's amazing, look. It just suddenly appeared from nowhere. Isn't that cool? Don't know how I did that. That's ace. Right, don't move. Now, so, even though I can see that there, I'm gonna keep using this. Um, so, um, what we've got then, so if you look at this now, you'll see, oh, I can't do it upside down. You, you keep looking at that one there, okay? Um, and I'll look at this one. So, we still have the pentatonic scale in the first position, okay? We looked at it before, so there's, I can't talk about that again. We did it in the last video. This time, to save any confusion, I've, I've just removed the flat five. Um, so before, we would have said the flat five, uh, the flat five would have been uh, just here, and it would be here. That's part of the blue scale. Okay, the blue scale is like the pentatonic scale, but you have this kind of flat five thing going on. Ignore it for now, okay? Because for the sake of today's video, we're going to keep things really relatively simple. But what you're seeing here now is all the numbers have changed. They all look different. But don't be afraid of this, okay? The only reason why all these numbers have, these numbers have all jumbled up is because our root is now what I told you before. It's off the fourth position here. And when I say the fourth, it's fourth relative to what was our root here, okay? One, two, three, four. Do, re, mi, va, okay? We went up to the fourth. But that, if the chord that we are now playing starts from that note there, that is no longer considered a fourth, okay? It is now the root. It's the root of the chord that we're playing. Now, if this is confusing you, sit back, have a cup of tea, have a rest, and don't let your insecurity confuse you. Because I'm going to tell you now that you probably have this thing going on right now that you're panicking, okay? If you are, if you're not understanding it, it's because you're kind of panicking. This looks hellishly confusing if you don't understand it. But just listen to what I'm saying rather than the things you think you know. Remove everything else and just focus on this one point. The root is always starting from the, the chord, the beginning of the chord that you're playing. So if we're playing a D chord, in this case it would be a D, if, we, if that note there's a D, okay, and the chord all stems from that D, that's the root, that's the root of the chord. So you can forget what we said about the root being here now, because the root is no longer there. The chord's moved, we're now here. That is the first thing you've got to get your head around. If you can get your head around that concept, everything else makes sense. Because everything else is relative to that point I just made there. Okay? So for example, if that's a one, if you know your intervals, which are really simple if, once we've shown you, okay? And if you don't understand intervals right now, please don't worry, because it's really straightforward to learn. But if you do know, then you'll know that that's a two. And if you go up an octave, it becomes a nine. Right? We also know that straight below the root is the fourth note of the scale, the fourth. Then we know the fifth is always, if you, if you know your little bar, your, your little rock and roll chords, the root and the five is the classic little sort of rock chord. The root, five and the root, there's no major or minor to that, it's just a chord. So if you're playing a D chord, that is your classic rock chord, root, fifth and root. Classic rock chord. If you don't know what I mean, let's whack in this. Let's whack on that. Let's whack on a humbucker. Let's give it a bit of. It's not major, it's not minor, it's just D. There's no flavour, there's no, there's no um, melancholy, sadness. And there's no happiness. <laughs> okay, it's just. Root, five, root. Relax. Root, five, root. Root, five, root. Oh, 
Um, there's no additional minor or major flavor to the Route 500. So if you remember that, that the fifth is always there and the Route is always an octave below, that's it, it's your chord sorted out there. Right, so I digress. So this all starts to make sense, is what I'm saying. So that alone, you need to spend a bit of time getting your head around. That when you're on the one chord, all of the intervals that we've talked about in that first video are correct to the one chord. When we move to the, to the four chord, those intervals have now all changed. They've all moved relative to the new chord that we're playing. And that's what we're going to explore today. And it's really cool. It's really cool because we are going to see just how effective that one bit of knowledge is. It's crazy. It's crazy, crazy exciting. When the penny drops on that one thing, it's just amazing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep that there so I can, I can follow my own grid because I, I'd like to be able to explain what I'm doing as I'm doing it. You don't need to see that one because you're looking at that one. I keep banging my head on there. Um, so let's give it a bit of ooh. and um, now I, I, let me see what I've got on here. That's one I was doing earlier, so I've got A, and I think I'd do it for two, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two. Okay, so I'll stop that. So what I want you to do is create a couple of bars of A7. A7. And then a couple of bars of D7. That is all we're doing here. And by the way, someone has also asked about doing a bit of rhythm, some basic blues rhythm, and that's fine, we can do that as well. My simple, my simple tip of the day would be to think in threes. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. If you can do that, that is really cool. Uh, so you'll be going one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three, one, two, three. Thinking threes, okay? One, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three. That's a bar, okay? But we can't spend too much time on that now. I'll be here all day and you'll get bored. Um, so, so this is what I've done here essentially. Interesting. Even though I haven't done that there actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you that. I've gone sort of, uh, I've gone. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. It's going one, two, three, 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 one, two. It's still doing it. It's still doing the one, two, three, one, two, even though it's not immediately obvious. Uh, so, cool. So, we're going to have a look at. Um, I'm going to do a lick, okay? I'm going to do this. And I do not want you to start having to copy my licks. I don't want, I want this to be exactly the opposite to that. But you're still, it's still okay to look at them. But I don't want you to feel that you have to do the same. But I'm going to show you what I did just quickly. But I don't want you to feel like you've got to copy it. Because as long as you finish on the same note, that's all we care about. So let's, well, I'm going to start here. Now when we're on the one chord, okay. This is where it helps to print off the last interval sheet and then use the one we've got here for the four chord. So we're going to, on the one, we're going to start off on what would be the fifth. Fifth, minor seven, root, minor third, and back to the root. So we're going to start on a pretty safe note. We're going to move across and then we're going to end on the root, okay? Happy days, is that what we say? Happy days, happy, happy with that? Oh, uh, I like that. <laughs> this is what, this is, I don't learn licks, you see. Now we're gonna go. That's it. That's the one I'm gonna stick with. Okay. So let's go. I'm not gonna play. When the chord changes, I'm not going to play anything. I want you to play it. Because if you play it, 
you're gonna hear it, it's gonna sound so cool. Oh, back, now I'm back to the one chord again. Now you play it. Still works, yeah? Still works. Sounds amazing. I'll play it this time as well. I'll wait for the for that. Play on the front pickup. Okay. It's root. That's resolve to root. Now. Now it's gone back to the root again. That's a fifth. That's a fifth. <laughs> oh, he screwed up. Oh, I'm going to do it again in a minute. That's a fifth and back to root. Root. <laughs> now we're resolving to the fifth. Um, so why did it sound cool? It sounds cool because we played one lick. Initially, it resolved to the root. We said before that the root's a really safe place to rest. We didn't change the lick. We played exactly the same lick when the chord moved. So the pressure wasn't on us to change the lick. We sounded creative because the chords moved. And because the chords moved, that lick we played, we know now still resolves because it ends on a fifth. We just said how strong and powerful that fifth. The fifth is a really important backup note. It's, um, it, it resolves really nicely in a different way to the root but it still sounds like a very safe place for us to stop. So by having the chords move, we sound like we're resolving to the root to begin with, but then it sounds like we've resolved to the fifth. But we only resolved to the fifth because the chords moved. We did nothing. And in fact, if we had moved, it would have sound more boring. Because if we resolve to the root again, so for example, let me just, let's just do that for fun. Uh, so when we go to the D, if I look at my diagram, we could resolve to the root there. Now, interestingly, um, so let me just get my head around this myself. A one uh, minor third fourth. Yeah, that's a that's interesting because normally the root is the root of the four chord is a quite a, a, a real bad spot. If you look at the last diagram we did, the fourth. Of the yeah, I don't want to buy. I don't want to go too far here, but on the one chord, that would not be a good place to stop. So this is going to be interesting because this is the one place where you will stop when you're on the four chord, and you've got to know you're stopping at the right place because if you stop on this note and you're on the one chord, it's going to sound really crap. Let's just let's just let's, let's just test that theory. Let's test the theory together. Because I've got no idea, really. I'm making it up. Uh, right, so. Resolved. Oh, ah! What's happened? Sounds pants. Oh, oh, phew. Yeah, it's back here. So, that's a great one. That's a brilliant one. That's a great one. So, it's such a great example of knowing your chord movement. 
because I think you know what I'm saying now, right? So let me stop it. Let me uh, let me just reappraise what I've just said. Let's just do it again. Today we're studying the fourth, the four chord, and how to make the the um, the, the music we're playing sound expressive. We've just explained that by doing the same lick that's resolving to the root of the, the one chord, it's going to sound cool. Because when we move to the new chord, the fourth chord, it's now going to be resolving to the fifth. Fine, we ticked that box, we kind of understood that. Then we looked at, well okay, what if we want to resolve to the root of the four chord? Surely that will sound good. It does. It sounds great. And if you know that, that root is there, it's going to sound fantastic. But it's only going to sound fantastic when you're on the fourth chord. And therefore, a little bit of intelligent playing or foresight or awareness, it might just be that you over time get to feel it because you don't know any theory whatsoever. So for example, your brain, your hearing just tells you. I'm, I'm resolved to the root. I'm now on the root of the one chord. Oh, it's moved. I'm on the one chord of the four chord. I'm on the I'm on the root of the four chord. Now I'm back to the root of the one chord. So let's let's try mixing that up. I'm going to keep going from the root of the one chord. Now I'm on the root of the four chord. And I know it's going to move back. So now I'll go back to the one, the root of the one chord. Okay, so now I'm going to try doing something really exciting. I'm going to move to the minor seven. I'm going to move to the minor seven of the four chord. I'm going to target the minor seven of the four chord. Okay? So, we're on the one. The four chord's going to come up in a minute. Now it sounds a bit, but it does, it works, it works. If I go down, maybe down, down to the root, uh, the octave below. Wait for a second. Oh yeah, it's funky. See, that sounds awesome. Now it's gonna move. sound pretty funky when doing that it's the light it's the, sh it's the sunlight shining through it, it, it's 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 creating a it's creating some kind of weird thing there oh i hope that's been okay um now we're on 23 minutes now for this lesson i think i'm going to stop there there is so much we could do we could kind of float around all sorts of things on that i want you to look at today's new chart and I want you to digest the four chord. What do we mean by the four chord? Are you happy with that? Are you happy with building the intervals from the root of that chord? And can you see how the movement between the one chord and the four chord, how it changes, the, the, the intervals change with the chord? Can you also start to hear and feel how those 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 intervals feel against the chord because that they they're always the same it doesn't matter what it doesn't matter what the name of the chord if it's d7 b7 a7 g7 if you resolve to the seven it will always sound a certain way like you heard the fifth 
it kind of worked but it was slightly off not the root yeah it wasn't it it, it, it kind of it it, it uh. see so there's the root those two together they work together because they they both sound resolved but they don't that but they, they resolve in different ways i'll give you a really quick i know i'm going to stop but i'm going to just very 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 quickly the idea of the ninth uh let me do it like this now listen to this this one chord this is called a minor ninth if i do it right oh. i just absolutely love that chord it's it's oh oh it's nice but it's ah slightly off yeah i call that sweet tension whenever i hear a ninth so it's It's kind of sweet tension. It's like, oh, like cliffhanger stuff. Um, it always does, doesn't matter if I do it there. Minor always sounds sad, major always sounds happy. Um, a fourth is always um, Star Wars. Where you play it will always sound the same and these intervals will always have a similar feel um so look i hope that helps um oh please please say it does because you might it's gonna be really horrible because you're gonna go yeah the first one was good rich but <laughs> i think you were lucky um hopefully the second one has helped too um what we're gonna do we're gonna go to the five chord we'll build up a whole we're gonna do the whole thing we'll go through a whole song together it's gonna be ace um what I'd like you to do is um, once we've, if someone can come up with a really clever idea for how to share our, our, um, our ideas, uh, that'd be great, wouldn't it? So maybe someone can tell me how we can do that. So um, you can sort of pull all of your kind of ideas into one little sort of website. I don't know, I've no idea how we do it, but it would be really nice to sort of hear some people's examples. And even, even being able to say, hey, I resolved to the root here, I resolved to the fifth here, I resolved to the minor seventh on the four chord, hey, and then I did this idea on the fifth. Uh, and then, you know, it would be great because it shows that we're all kind of like understanding the concepts. And, um, and, and frankly, once you learn this, you don't have to keep remembering this stuff. You don't have to, so I, you know, I don't remember all this. Um, I, in fact, if I was in a band and if I was playing musically properly, like it was, you know, I was doing it regularly, I would, I'd, sit, I'd chart it, I'd do this. And I, cause, it, cause this is just giving me clues. It's giving me ideas. It's giving me inspiration which I can then start playing and the more I play it, it becomes natural and it becomes part of me and I don't have to be worrying about whether it's a fourth or a fifth or a seventh or a flat, you know, a ninth or whatever. What am I doing? I don't care because I just, I've got so used to doing it. It's no longer a worry. The theory simply helps you understand what you're doing and it gives you creative ideas uh, and it's just fun. It's really good fun. Um, okay, that's it. Thanks very much uh, and uh, hope you're all well and uh, I'm trying not to refer to events because obviously I don't want to date the video, but you know what I'm talking about. So, okay, cool. See you soon. Bye.